Hello, our friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Hello there. Welcome back. Welcome back, guys. As always, we want to thank our Patreons for their support. And so we want to thank our newest Patreons. We want to say a huge thank you to Chris, Naomi, and Tracy and Chris again. Oh. <laughs> I got that right. <laughs> I did. Okay. Well, thank you guys so much for your support. We couldn't do it without you guys. Um, I already have ideas going for the next uh, exclusive as Cindy was channeling some interesting information um, about hidden technologies and this time not underneath the Vatican uh, somewhere different and very very curious so we'll be going into that perhaps later on today or tomorrow uh, meanwhile you know ignorance kills uh, it really really does constantly and so when I see something like this and Cindy pointed this out you know God wins I, I don't think there ultimately can be a more ignorant statement because w who are you really talking about here? Are you talking about the creator of this universe? Are you talking about the source of all things? Or one of the innumerable beings that have been classified as God? You cannot get more generic than saying God. You really can't. There, there, it just throughout history, if we look closely, we will see. And, and the fact is, most people don't look closely. Most people just catch what is thrown out there and kind of go along with the crowd. And, and that's how we had uh, things like the Spanish Inquisition. And, you know, I, there has been a serious um, effort to downplay how bad the Inquisition is. Uh, and was and you know I was just looking at one article that popped up that said they uh, only about 2,000 people literally lost their lives well not from when I was looking at it back in the 70s and 80s uh, then it was more like these numbers are more as you see estimates of the number of people killed by the Spanish Inquisition in which Sixtus the fourth authorized a papal bull in 1478 have ranged from 30,000 to 300,000. Some historians are convinced that millions died. What was the Inquisition about? Well, it was all about, you know, persecution of anybody that wasn't Catholic, really. You know, you had to believe in what the Catholic Church said, or you literally would be called a heretic, and they would torture you any sort of way they went, or they wanted to. Because, truly, the ones in the Church were the demons. And that's the reality of it. And, and this is the reality. It, it should be pretty obvious. I mean, even the Bible itself says that this is Satan's world. Satan rules here. Satan meaning adversary. So wouldn't Satan be, you know, the number one power in the power structure geopolitically? Wouldn't, you know, the, the main religious texts be twisted and distorted by Satan? Of course they are. And then yet... You know, the majority of the world is identifying as Christian in the modern sense or Islamic. And that's, again, over 60 percent, 65 ish percent of the world identifies as one of those two things. Meanwhile, what do we have? Calls for revenge here. Iranian protesters calling for revenge against Israel after a missile strike destroyed Iran's consulate building in Syria's capital. Um, yeah, we're going to touch more on this. And you see, you know, there's been a lot of protests from people that just it, wrong is wrong. And yet there are some that will blindly support an entity, regardless of what it does wrong, just because of their belief system. You cannot get more ignorant than that. You cannot get more stupid than that. And, and really, you cannot get more evil than that and they don't even understand how evil they are being by supporting just out and out murder extermination genocide we have to change our perspective but you know again humanity is is controlled by the adversary and believes everything the adversary has said even though the adversary is always changing that if you look closely mm. It's, it's really a very, very, very difficult situation that humanity finds themselves in because so many people that are out there in front, you know, they're working 
under the idea that they're in the right spot, you know, that their heart is in the right spot, yet they are filled with hate and spewing poison and putting a lot of really negative, bad energy out into the universe because they honestly think it's the right thing to do. And when you look at it from a non-attached perspective and you stand back, it's like, okay, we, we do have people who are acting out of what they believe is, is the best interest of everything. So they're wanting to do the right thing. You can't fault people for wanting to do the right thing. But if people are not stopping to ask the questions to make sure what they're doing is the right thing, then, then there is a problem there, but we still have these blinders on and people just can't see. So it definitely is a conundrum. It's something that it's not going to be easily fixed without some sort of a huge giant wake up call. I hope that wasn't playing in the background. There could be some little uh, sounds going in the background. Let me block this out the rest of the way um, because this is a type of video where the demons really do get um active so if there is any sort of sound as i just clicked on this to block it as you're watching a plane a remote control plane from the ukrainian armed forces that they say launched an attack deep into russia <clears throat> and and just you know basically struck a building with it you know it's we have to stop using the labels that they give us because they want us they need us to be divided they need us to be patriotic and people still don't understand the bigger picture that when they're patriotic in one way they are literally putting down something else in another way and it's it's all about division you know people with the best meaning intentions become part of the of the plan the satanic plan and again it's stepping out of that plan that's what we have to do here you have seven illegal aliens one with prior attempted murder charges arrested in the basement of a bronx home with guns and drugs you know there's so much that's going to be coming out and you know it's all about timing by the way iran has made the statement that um, they're they're not pursuing revenge immediately, even though the people are screaming for it, because it's not the right time. Ah, uh, yes. Well, the the reality is all this is being orchestrated, and it's all following certain timing. This is completely a script at the highest levels. James O'Keefe, you you remember J James O'Keefe, um, Project Veritas. After 20 years of doing undercover investigations, I'm sadly announcing I'm stepping away from journalism and will intend to live a private life away from the spotlight. It's been too hard on me. The millions in legal fees, constant defamation, the psychological toll of being targeted by the government and now being sued by the organization that he founded. It's just too much for a man to bear and the pressure is too much to take. I can see no reason to continue because as many say, nothing ever happens to these people as a result of exposing them. Therefore, I'm going to retire from exposing the truth and catching corruption on tape. I'll be resigning from public spotlight and will attempt to live a private life free from attack to the thousands of sources on the inside that have messaged me and need me. I hope you find another organization for you to go to. And again, I'm sorry. Yeah, so, you know, what it is is, too, he understands the writings on the wall. You know, and I did a little comment down there. James knows what time it is because it's going to the other level, so to speak. Um, and what else have they taught us and told us? Well, they've, they've taught us to always look for them uh, giving giving out their plans everything is planned everything is scripted it's all right there and that doesn't mean it's the creator of the universe doing this no it's, it's quite the opposite it's the control system that's doing this hmm, mega quake on the horizon for israel country not prepared right you can see this has been um out there for quite a while this is from 2018 the other one was from uh, 2021 basically the same article was re reprinted again twice uh, in more recent years, after tremors, experts warn a huge quake is the greatest threat facing Israel. Hmm. 
Why? Well, because look where Israel is and, and, and look at this huge, again, line that runs right through it. There's a reason why um, these areas are picked by the control system, because these are beings with technology that would blow your mind away. And yet it's all been out there. If again you go in and you start reading the Mahabharata and you read uh, the Bhagavata Purana, which talks about time dilation, I mean, it talks about the fact that if you are traveling a ship away from Earth at a certain rate of speed and then you come back, even though it might be like one year for you, it, it'll be thousands of years in Earth time. They understood this thousands of years ago. How could they possibly understand it? Well, again, there's been many advanced beings on the planet. And, and the reality is all of us were a lot more advanced in those times, spiritually as well as technologically, and just simply in our ability to think clearly. Because, again, IQs are going in reverse. We, we, are, we have been dumbed down. We believe things that don't make any sense at all blindly following the the very demons that are torturing us you know i know a lot of people have really really studied uh ancient scriptures for for years and years and years and years and years but i think it's time to recognize that those scriptures that have been studied for so many years yes you you probably have a very very good handle on them but is it possible that they're twisted? Is it possible that it's just indoctrination that you've been studying for a very, very, very long time? And I'm not saying that to hurt anyone. I don't want to hurt. I don't want to insult. But it's a fair question. Looking at what we have seen and we can see the controllers and we see what they do. Is that not a fair question to go back and say, hey, you know, gosh, this information here that was put forth for everyone to see could that in somehow, some way be twisting my vision for everything and how the world is really run and how things, how things should truly go, you know? Um, I'm just one to ask questions. That's, that's kind of how I started this journey is to stop and pause and say, hey, as much as I want to believe this, I have to question it. And it, it really was difficult for me. It was difficult for my family because I was no longer just going along to get to get along. It, I had to stop that because my soul, it was just too much for my soul. My soul is saying, no, this is not right. You need to find out who you are and don't be afraid in doing that. That's the true essence of spirituality, not learning something out of a book that's been mass produced and given to everyone through the controllers. Yeah, expectations help form our reality. <clears throat> and unfortunately, the majority of the world has been given expectations that it's going to be uh, destroyed. And, you know, you look at one third lost in this, one third lost in that. And somehow they view that as good. Uh, how? How could you possibly view it as good, the pain and suffering? And this was, you know, really my big awakening uh, during Bible study as a kid with my mentor. And, you know, and I said to him, I said, so what are you going to be doing at the second coming, Norman? Oh, well, I'm sure we'll be captured, captured up in the clouds and we'll watch with uh, Jesus from above and you know, watch the death and destruction. And I said, well, what are you going to be saying? I'll be saying, go get them. Go get them. Where's your love? Where's your compassion? What the bleep is wrong with you? And that was it for me. <laughs> you know, but I had seen uh, all the distortion in it a long time. It never, ever, ever rang as anything positive. No, it's not. It is all about forecasting death and destruction. And so in the times right ahead, uh, we are going to witness what's going to look like Ezekiel 38 coming uh, to pass. We are going to witness the destruction uh, of the Vatican. You'll see the Pope flee. And again, you could see Italy itself is right on this borderline. So you're going to see anywhere you see these red lines, you have the potential for mega quakes. 
Yeah, straight through Israel and Lebanon. And, you know, it's, it's again been prophesied because we are going through the same times we've always gone through under this control system because they utilize the louche, the pain and suffering to literally feed the demonic entities uh, that then follow their bidding. That's, that's how they train them. You know, again, it's, it repeats itself. And until we start to understand the bigger question, and we should be saying, okay, which God are you talking about? Because there really is only one creator of this particular universe. There's one source of all things. But countless beings have been called gods, and they're not the creator, and they're not the source of all. As you see, the first human case of avian flu in Texas raises alarm. Now, you know, this is also going to be another reason for them to destroy more of the food supply, which is what they're ultimately after. They only need a certain amount of people in the cell cities, and that's it. That's all they need. Everybody else can go and just wait in the astral, wait in 4D to take a body at some time in the future, because that is what happens. Um, again, when we are out of the body, our consciousness doesn't go to sleep and, and awaits a resurrection period. No, that is not even remotely accurate. The whole concept of resurrection is, is one that is, is so off base. Resurrection of the same physical body, you cannot get any more wrong than that. It's just not accurate. And, and it's also so ultimately perverse yet there's a professed belief in that ye must be born again that simply states that you know the the reality is the soul transmigrates but it also transmigrates instead of necessarily always reincarnates it's not that we always come back as as humans and it's not that we've always been humans as well as you know perhaps up to a third of the people on the planet here have had lives on other planets in other star systems and they're here to help the two-thirds uh, that are going through their first round uh, in in being humans per se and trying to help them realize that you're locked into a system that is using and abusing you and it's not this way everywhere Cancer on campus, over 150 students and staff in North Carolina University diagnosed with a host of tumors and disease. Wow, they say it's teeming with toxic chemicals. We've always been exposed to these toxic chemicals. Lymphoma, thyroid, breast cancers reported. These are, you know, it's, it's 150 students, staff, and alumni. Now, the reality is, again, we're always exposed to all these things. Uh, a lot of people made choices that they now absolutely regret and wish they didn't do. There's so much out there that we're going to be seeing. We're going to be seeing all sorts of plagues and pestilences. And again, we can find those in the biblical times. We could find them in the dark ages. It's so interesting, too, that a lot of times in the dark ages, you'll have depictions of strange cloud formations yeah, strange cloud formations like we have now with, with clouds that just don't look right. Maybe they have grid patterns. And then next thing you know, people are getting sick. It was the same way in the dark ages. Sightings of UFOs or what we would call UFOs. And then people get sick and then people die. This is, this is so obvious what's going on. Yet the God spell that has been put on the people of this planet has been working and keeping them divided. You know, I look at I look at that article where they're talking about, you know, the toxicities in in these classrooms and in these rooms and like Mike said, they they've been there for a very long time, but what is the other common denominator? I mean, they need something to really throw people off that these um jabs that people are getting are not good for them. I mean, it it's not serving to lengthen their life a, at all. Yeah, I don't think that's a word we should use, um, you know, but still it could take away everything that we just got revitalized here. Um, okay, no, we'll go to Patreon with this one. Um, yeah, so, and, and it's more than that because, again, it's technology of, of the FIVEG that's, that's 
triggering as well. And this is another reason why we say you, you really won't, don't want to be in the cities because the cities are going to shorten lives. You can't get around that. Those frequencies are going to shorten lives. It's just what's happening. And, and this is, you know, the reality is it's always out there. There's always a fringe that has it right. <clears throat> you know, the FIVEG technology is a military technology and it's doing what it can do. And going back to this, uh, you see that you have seven aid workers that were uh, killed here in a blast done by Israel. Israel is purposely trying the leadership of Israel, not the average person, because the average person, again, is either clueless or is, you know, feeling what's wrong with this, um, or they're just trying to ignore it. But it, it's not going to be able to be ignored because what they're doing is they are making sure that they will manifest this reality. As you see, Israel has bombed the House of Journalism Foundation in Western Gaza. And they banned Al Jazeera. They've killed 137 journalists in total. So, you know, it, it's you can't get any more uh, goading a response. They want the response. They want the response. Uh, Israel kills the top Iranian commander, General Mohammed Zahedi. This general was in charge of all war activities across the Middle East. Yeah, absolutely, completely orchestrated and planned. Uh, 11 people in that Damascus consulate, as you see. Uh, you know, again, if you live by the sword, you shall die by the sword. That's why you have to be careful and when you would ever use the sword. And again, obviously, if somebody is, if, if a group of people are breaking into your house to kill your family, you have a, a right to self-defense in, in whatever way possible. But I think it's better, first and foremost, to try to get out of the way if you are in an area where you're going to be at high risk to being attacked. And, and Russia is uh, saying that this attack was categorically unacceptable absolutely unacceptable and must be stopped and this is exactly what they are doing they're bringing around ezekiel 38 and the uh, destruction of gog and magog according to uh, you know the old testament here and so you can see this is the names of god uh, bible where it is saying things a little clearer but I did encounter uh, a, a one particular spot where it had a distortion, and that'll be a good topic for another video, because you know again they they're still trying to hide some of the things that they could still hide from us. But when you look at the original Hebrew, Yahweh spoke this word to me. Yahweh. This is what Adonai Yahweh or Lord Yahweh. One of the Elohim, your Elohim, Elohim, mighty ones, those that judge humanity. In other words, the rulers of humanity, the extraterrestrial um, Anunnaki beings that came here and took over in what we would call, again, the Kali Yuga. So what's it saying? Well, it's saying it's going to bring a whole group of people, Persia, Sudan, Put, Gomer, Gog, Magog. These are Old Testament names, and these are naming certain peoples that are going to be pulled into this war to come against Israel in the latter days. And so again, it, it distinguishes it because this is Yahweh talking. This is not El talking. <clears throat> this is not even the Elohim. This is Yahweh, one of the Elohim talking. And again, he's the jealous one. He's the angry one. When Cindy looks to him, she can't see his face. He's, he's got his face blocked. He's very real. He still is existing. Um, but he is everything about war. In fact, um, there, there is some sort of, and there's some obvious connections to Mars, but, but when you look at it, yeah, very much, well, you know, Lord of hosts, hosts, armies, military, this is a Mars, a warlike um, being, and, and this is what we have ruling the Earth for at least the last five to 6,000 years. Mm -hmm. 
Well, we look at the change in words, you know, now we call it armies and, and military in the Bible, they call it hosts and it, it is this this one is very difficult for me to latch on to and get the information from um, when I look at this it, it's almost like there's a chaos spell over it and, and I'm really kind of confused by that because I'm having trouble grasping and filling in blanks when normally I, it's not hard for me to do at all but this one is very very different and this being he has a type of technology that he actually wears that I can see that puts him in the position. So, you know, in these days, he would translate as some type of high and mighty general or something, maybe even higher than that. But I just don't like the confusion between these the supposedly sacred things in the Bible and things that we have now. They're one and the same. There's the words have changed a little. Yeah, absolutely. Again, it says everything. When you when you read the Old Testament, it's very clear. This this is again the God of War that is speaking. And even when you look to Lamb of God, and I made the connections before, Lamb, Ram, Lamb, Aries, Mars, you know, blood sacrifice. This is what they're they're getting. When you when you say that you believe that the blood of Yeshua washed your sins away, you're literally saying you believe in the concept of blood sacrifice. And so they could keep dressing you up in their little outfits, everybody with a different color uniform, send them off to be a blood sacrifice that is then used uh, for destructive purposes and to placate the true demons that feed off the battlefield. We talked before about in, in Vietnam when they were first using the first night vision, the soldiers saw things that terrified them on the battlefield. <clears throat> and I don't mean other soldiers. Yeah, exactly. War is a blood sacrifice to demonic entities that feed off of all the death, destruction, the anxiety, the fear, the hatred, the rage. This is how they control us. So in, in reality, you know, Yahweh is a very demonic entity. This is a dark demonic entity. And, you know, people are unknowingly saying Yahweh's going to win. God wins. Yeah, I mean, you cannot get any more ignorant. And it is ignorant. And you have people say, well, you need the Holy Spirit to come in you. That's an unholy spirit, and I don't want to have anything to do with it. It's so obvious. Now, what does he say? Well, it says, I will punish Gog with plagues and death. I will send rainstorms, large hailstones, fire, and burning sulfur on his troops and on the many armies with him. I will show my greatness and holiness, and I will reveal myself to many nations. Then they will know that I am Yahweh, yeah, not the creator of this universe, not at all. Again, you know, it, it's quite, quite different. So you have this massive war, this massive uh, angry grouping of many armies that are coming to Israel. And then you have what seems to be natural disasters as well as perhaps a natural technology um, that will be used. And one of the keys here, right, is right here on that day there will be a large earthquake in the land of israel fish birds wild animals everything that crawls on the ground every person on earth will tremble in my presence the mountains will be torn down the cliffs will crumble and every wall will fall to the ground now some have taken this to be the pole shift and, and you know the magnetic pole reversal leading to a, a pole shift and crustal displacement event um, what we get is this is technology. This is not natural. This is technology. They use technology all the time. And it's over and over again that we see this. So who are these people? Well, they, they're literally, uh, they're tribal names from the Old Testament of which, you know, a lot of people have tried to figure out, well, who are we really talking about? Because we're talking about offspring here of certain entities. Now, this is one version that I've seen multiple times with Gomer uh, being uh, the people of Eastern Central Europe, Magog and, and Gog. Gog is sometimes taken to be Russia, Russian steppes, uh, Magog, maybe perhaps. 
as far as Mo Mongolia and China, uh, Persia is obviously Iran, as you see Kush here, Libya, uh, Put, you know, you, you see these groupings, Meshesh and Tubal coming from Turkey, um, but there, there isn't a unanimous um, agreement amongst the scholars on, on who exactly these people are, and this is what we also find time and time again. There's really not necessarily a, a definitive agreement because, again, this is looking at things from the biblical perspective, which is taken from an older narrative. You know, that's part of the big reveal. Uh, if you've ever seen the John Ankerberg show, uh, you know, again, I, I grew up with this stuff as a kid. I was watching uh, Hal Lindsey, John Ankerberg, all, David Jeremiah and stuff as a little kid. Um, I was always fascinated by this stuff, yet it never hit me as, as giving me warm and fuzzies. No, quite the opposite. So according to John Ankerberg, Magog, according to first century Jewish historian Josephus, the land of Magog was inhabited by the Scythians. The Scythians lived through Central Asia, indicating its identity associated with nations today like Kazakhstan, uh, Uzbekistan, Turkmenistan, Tajikistan, Afghanistan, Rosh, remote part of the, n the north, you know, could be Russia again, Meshek and Tubal, modern day Turkey, Persia, which is Iran, Kush, Ethiopia, put Libya, Gomer, uh, part of Turkey heading on up into Europe, uh, and Beth uh, Togarma. So, you know, what you see is really what we do see uh, going on is, is kind of a, a unified Islamic world coming together. Uh, allied with uh, China and allied with Russia. And so, you know, this is orchestrated. Okay, that's just the um, earthquake. That's just the earthquake map. It does it every so often. So, you know, again, this, this is exactly what we are now looking at. But realize, too, and, you know, this is historyhowstuffworks.com. And it's talking about the Epic of Gilgamesh, which again comes from 2700 BC. Uh, and in reality, we have a lot more of the Sumerian uh, scriptures than we do of the biblical and in much, much greater detail. So when you're talking about the sons of Noah, which is ultimately what we're talking about when we talk about these different tribes, you know, Noah wasn't Noah. Noah, you know, was either... You could look to Utnapishtim as being uh, the source of that Noah. Uh, if you go and you look in uh, the Hindu scriptures, Manu, man, you, is, is, is also the equivalent. And there's a flood narrative. There's flood narratives all around the world. And, and each time we see it, we see there's you know somebody chosen by the gods or God to survive with their family and maybe a few other lucky ones. Well, the interesting thing with Utnapishtim and his wife, the gods granted, it's, it's plural, it's known. And in fact, the, the usual people come into the, the play here with Enlil and Enki and all that, the Anunnaki right out in the open. And ultimately, Utnapishtim, you know, survives the flood, thanks to Enki, and he ends up being made immortal. He, he in fact, becomes an GG which is like a lesser god, which again is more of a title than anything when you get down to it. And it's interesting too, because Enkidu and Gilgamesh is another story, and Enkidu is um, kind of a Bigfoot-like being, kind of a, a giant-type being. It's really interesting. You know, again, these stories are so, <clears throat> so much older than anything biblical, but it doesn't really matter because the consciousness of the planet is expecting to see this. So no matter how we divide these names and stuff, people just take it to be the will of the creator of the universe. But it's never been the creator of the universe. In fact, the, the Torah, the five books of Moses, is nothing about the afterlife. It's not even about afterlife. It's about here and now. And it's about the covenant of those that we would call the Jewish people or Israel with their particular judge or ruler, 
And it says it right here in Exodus 20. I, Yahweh, your Elohim. And am Elkanah, or a jealous God. A jealous, angry, vindictive. That's, that's just how his nature is. But Yahweh is yours. Other people have other ones. And it even says, thou shalt have no other alien gods. How could it be any more clear than that? It also says, you shall make no depictions, as it says right here, never make your own carved idols or statues that represent any creature in the sky, on the earth, or in the water. Why? Because then they'll know what I look like. A little selfie right here. There you go. I mean, again, this is from Africa. And this is from an African tribe, I believe in Western um, Africa. And it is talking about the reptilians that rule the world. It is talking about the reptilian gods. And this is their depictions of them. Now, we don't find that in Israel because, no, no you, you, you can't show what Yahweh looks like. Yeah, I mean, we find these in Mesopotamia. We find these in Mesoamerica. We find similar ones to these over in Asia. They're all over the place. Oh, yeah. You know, representations of these big, heavy, thick skulls that are very, very, hmm, they kind of remind me of dinosaur heads. Yeah, exactly. And when we think of the Draco, why would one be wearing human-like clothes with a breast shield on and look at that face this is in japan by the way uh japan a uh, very interesting country uh you know you cannot get any clearer than this mm -mm. this is why you don't make any representations you cannot have the world knowing what your god looks like yeah i mean that makes total sense as far as why i cannot see his face because he's cast a spell on it he's made sure that people cannot see his face but there has already been plenty of people who put it out there and it, it's been found you know it, it's just something i find so very unfortunate that that uh the world has gone in this direction but we are on the ascending path and when we're on the ascending path that means that all of this information gets to come to light and people get to make decisions based on what is true what is in reality you know not based on the peer pressure that's put on them in society and i feel bad i we know a lot of people out there who have these other belief systems and they are not allowed to share it around their families around their friends around anyone or anything you know in fear of and that just shouldn't be we should be able to express our belief systems without dogging or downing another belief system if if it's something that is expansive which is love love is expansive then why does there have to be so much fear if someone doesn't believe the same way you do absolutely absolutely you know the the creator of this universe is a benevolent being and this is a learning experience and we are all co-creators here and we are all basically on the learning curve to becoming a bigger creator than we currently are so we have to you know judge the energies wisely and not make fear-based decisions yeah we we just simply call it for what it is because it is what it is and and that is darkness when you are doing things out of fear there's no love there there's no love there you know just that statement the fear of god is the beginning of wisdom is is so wrong and and really it couldn't be any more wrong it's there is love love is expansive as cindy was saying love expands outwards it envelops others now fear contracts inwards it gets us running in our own minds instead of feeling into the energy field of the all and starting to recognize that there is an underlying unity to all things he doesn't have to worry about being bitten by this little guy because this little guy can read his intentions he knows that he's he's somebody that means him no harm yet if it was somebody <laughs> of a different energy yeah they could get bit pretty hard you know but again animals can read our energies 
they, they can see our energy field. And we, we notice this all the time, too, when we're out sometimes doing our mantras outside. We, there's a swarm of dragonflies that just come around us, and there's hundreds of them. We've had the same thing happened in uh, New Mexico with birds when we were doing mantras. Uh, again, all of a sudden it was just incredible because, you know, we were out in the middle of the desert and then there's all these birds all around us, hundreds of them. The consciousness field really is, is made to thrive on a loving frequency. This is how the darkness rules. It's through arbitrary division. It, it's through pitting one person against another and convincing you that you're on the right side and they're on the wrong side, where it's just so simple. There is no need for dogma of any kind. And so in these times, yes, absolutely, they are uh, instigating what we can view as Ezekiel 38. Um, I do think that the timeline of these events, it, it seems pretty clear to me, could be wrong still, always could be wrong, because there's so many different consciousnesses in, at play. So if we can awaken more people, we can still change timelines, but it's, it's all about the awakening and the expansion and understanding of the oneness. This is why we say namaste, because again, it's recognizing that the source that's in you is the same ultimate consciousness source. We're all part of the same consciousness field. And so we, we're finding a resonance you know, my heart really goes out to those people who have a different belief system. They have a different understanding. Um, they've come to different conclusions based on what they've read. They just know that, that it's not, you know, the mainstream is not true, yet they, they're they not able to share because of fear of um, maybe being banished by the family, maybe being hated by someone, maybe being shunned by a group of people. And it really shouldn't be that way. We should all be like little children here on earth who are exploring our realms, you know. But right now, I guess we just have to sit with some level of acceptance because it's not like everybody can break away from their, their families. Yeah, I mean, you just can't do that. You need families. So I think it's up to us to be the bigger person. And until other people come around, sometimes we have to sit with our understanding and just... Um, Talk to talk to wherever it's safe to talk to and not put yourself in danger. But that does make me sad that people truly feel they're in danger if they expose themselves. Um, but, you know, we're all here together and we're here doing it with you. And historically, that's the case. I mean, we saw what happened with the Inquisition, burning of the witches with with every every particular group of people that were doing things differently than the system wants. So, yeah. It absolutely it could be the case we, we've seen how ignorance uh, absolutely is one of the biggest tools of the dark side indeed it is source bless and namaste namaste